How's it going everyone? In today's video, I am going to go over one of the most dreaded topics, big O notation. When you're first learning data structures and algorithms, big O notation can be a real struggle because I feel like a lot of people don't teach it very well. When I first started learning big O notation, it took me a bit of time to grasp and I'm hoping that I can demystify it for you with straightforward and simple examples. If you're not already subscribed, you should really do that. I release coding tutorials just like this every single week. And if you wanna support me further, you can check out my Patreon. And with that, let's get into the video. So first, what is big O notation? Well, it allows you to describe the performance of the code that you write in two different ways. The first way is time complexity, also known as execution time, and this tells you how long your code is going to take to run. And then the second way is space complexity, also known as memory allocation, and this tells you how much memory your code is gonna require every time it is ran. So let's start off with a very simple example. Let's say we had the following function. In this example, we are achieving what's known as a constant time complexity, which is known as a big O of one. This first line is gonna take constant time to be ran. And an easy way to understand this is you can ask yourself, is this line going to take longer if our input changes? And the answer to that question for line one is no, it's not gonna take longer because we are always taking in only two numbers, A and B, and performing the computation to sum up two numbers will always be the same. As for our second line, just like with line one, we're just returning a variable. That will always take the same amount of time, so we can also consider that as constant time. Now, in order to evaluate the entire function, all we need to do is sum up each line. So big O of one plus big O of one is two, times big O of one. And this leads to a very important step when writing big O notation. We are always going to drop constants. And this is because we always take the biggest term to describe the algorithm. And I'm gonna explain more on this later. So we're going to cut off the two and we are just left with big O of one. So the entire function is a constant time complexity algorithm. So let's look at another example, but instead of adding two numbers, we are adding all of the numbers inside of an array that is given to us in our input. Just like before, we're gonna take it line by line. So the first line, we are initializing a variable to zero. Once again, this is unaffected by our input, so we can consider this constant. However, in the second line, we are looping over the entire length of our array. So what this means is that this line is directly affected by the input to our function. So what we can say here is that this line is running in big O of n time, where n is the length of our input array. And keep in mind, we can identify n as whatever character or symbol that we want. We could use k, m, z, it's really up to us. Next, if we move to our third line, that is also running in constant time because all we're doing is summing up the numbers to that sum variable. So this leads to another important step in big O notation. Whenever we have nested code, so for example, code inside of a for loop or while loop, then we are going to multiply those terms together instead of adding them. So for this for loop, we're going to do big O of n times big O of one. So we are just left with big O of n. And then finally, our return statement is constant time. So that means we are left with big O of one plus big O of n plus big O of one. And this evaluates to just big O of n since we're taking the biggest term. And this is also known as linear time complexity. As our input linearly grows, the time that it takes to execute this function will also linearly grow. Something useful to know when writing big O notation is how terms compare against one another. So in this chart, you can do exactly that. You can see that certain terms will take a lot longer to run as the input increases. So this all goes back to having the dominant term be the one that is describing the complexity. So for example, if I have an algorithm that ran in big O of n squared plus big O of n, we would just drop the big O of n because big O of n squared is the dominant term in this scenario. Another example would be if we had an algorithm that ran in big O of n times log of n plus log of n plus big O of n. When we multiply terms together, you can always view them as binded as the same term. So as our input grows, 
the big O of n times log of n term will overwhelmingly dominate the other terms. So we can drop big O of n and log of n. So let's look at one more example, but this time it's going to be a bit more involved. We already know line one is running in constant time. Line two, however, it is always running from one to 20. What this means is that no matter if our nums array grows in size, we are always going to loop exactly 20 times. That means that it is unaffected by our input and we can call this line constant. Line three is also going to be constant. We are not affected by our input here. Then when we go to the start of the next for loop, we can see that we are running up to nums.length. This will take big O of n time where n is the number of elements that we have in our array. In the next line, we're going to be doing the same exact thing. We're looping up to nums.length. So we can also say this is big O of n. Then in the third for loop, we're doing the same thing. We're looping up to nums.length. So this is big O of n. And then inside of all of these nested for loops, we are summing up all the numbers and that's just going to be constant. So remember any nested code that means we are going to multiply those terms. So this massive chunk of for loops will just evaluate to big O of n to the third. And then outside of these nested for loops, we're just returning our sum, which is just gonna take constant time. And now we are just going to add up all of these terms together and big O of n to the third is the dominant term. So that would be the final complexity. So that was the first part of the big O series. In the next big O video, I will be going over analyzing recursive algorithms. If that sounds interesting to you, don't forget to subscribe so you can get notified. Check out my Patreon if you want to support me further. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.